So first of all, to start the show, for those people who are hip hop fans and are just here for the number one hip hop artist in America, I'll get to it a little bit later in the show. We have to do the news first. So Joe Biden's cowardly appeasement oriented strategy in the Middle East has now gotten Americans officially killed. It was only a matter of time until this happened. Iranian proxy forces have been attacking Americans all over the Middle East, from Iraq to Syria, and now to Jordan. According to the Wall Street Journal, three U.S. service members were killed. At least 34 were injured. An Iran-backed militia's drone strike on a base in northeast Jordan, according to U.S. officials. Now, that is a bit of a difference in kind from attacks in Iraq or attacks in Syria. Those are both countries. They're not officially U.S. allies. Jordan is officially an American ally. So this would be an attack by an Iranian proxy force into an American allied space on Americans. The strike carried out by one-way dr- attack drone signals an escalating in fighting in the region. The president and secretary of defense did put out a statement suggesting retaliation. President Biden's statement was this, quote, today, America's heart is heavy. Last night, three U.S. service members were killed and many wounded during an unmanned aerial drone attack on our forces stationed in northeast Jordan near the Syria border. While we are still gathering the facts of the attack, we know it was carried out by radical Iran-backed militant groups operating in Syria and Iraq. And then there is the language about grieving for the fallen service members and how wonderful the soldiers are, all of which I'm sure is true. Also, if you had not spent every day since October 7th trying to make nice with Iran, demonstrating that your true interest in the Middle East has nothing to do with American interests, but to do with your electoral interests. This would not have happened. Here's the very simple math in the Middle East. If you do not punch terrorists directly in the mouth, incredibly hard and incredibly often, they get more aggressive with you. And when you show your neck, they attack. Joe Biden has been showing his neck largely since October 7th. In fact, long before that, Joe Biden has been showing America's neck in the Middle East since he decided that he was going to take the Houthis off the terror watch list since he decided that he was going to start appeasing the Palestinian Authority, since he decided that he was going to reorient away from the alliance-driven model that President Trump had embraced, the Abraham Accords model that really brought a lot of Sunni Arab countries into the fold, ranging from Saudi Arabia and UAE and Morocco to Egypt and Jordan. He decided to move away from that, did Joe Biden, and instead he was going to seek the Barack Obama-esque idiocy of what if we try to pursue a deal with Iran? And when you do that, What you end up doing is appeasing the largest terror sponsor in the region. And naturally, as the doors began to close around the Middle East to Iran, Iran started to buck against that. And they started to use their terror proxies as a way of upending the burgeoning relationships in the Middle East, as a way of scuttling any possibility of the broadening of the Abraham Accords to directly include Saudi Arabia. That is why October 7th happened. Essentially, Hamas was given a green light to attack Israel by Iran. And then Hezbollah, which is an Iranian terror group, was given the green light to attack Israel in the north. And then the Houthis were given the green light to attack shipping in the Red Sea. And at every turn, Joe Biden made clear that he was not going to hit them hard enough to make them stop. And the reason is because Joe Biden is much more fearful of war with Iran than Iran is fearful, apparently, of war with the United States. Now, no one wants war with Iran. No one is interested in war with Iran. But if it comes down to it, who do you think has more to fear, Iran from going to war with the United States or the United States from going to war with Iran? Again, that's not something that I'm calling for. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think anyone in their right mind thinks that that is a good idea. No one wants to spend blood. No one wants to spend treasure. And that is exactly correct. But containment can and should be pursued. Containment is a policy of deterrence that is applied in various regions surrounding Iran. You don't have to go to war directly with Iran to, for example, secure shipping in the Red Sea, which is deeply necessary considering that container shipments have now cost twice what they used to. And everybody is now rooting around the Cape of Good Hope instead of going up through the Red Sea. Their oil is getting more expensive because of all of this. Suggesting that Israel be supplied the munitions that it requires in order to take out the Iranian proxy Hamas and to deter the Iranian proxy Hezbollah in the north or take it out. That has nothing to do with America going directly to war. When Americans get killed, the proper response to that is to to make sure the other side of the F around find out equation actually applies. That does not mean that you have to directly attack Iran. It doesn't mean that you're going to have F-22s flying over Tehran or anything like that. There are ways the United States can apply force in the face of the death of Americans that actually establishes deterrence. And if you're not going to do that, you shouldn't have troops there. It's that simple. It's that simple. If you think that the United States should completely pull out of the region, which is a whole other argument, and also, I think, a specious argument considering the United States does have deep and abiding reasons to care about the Middle East, ranging from oil supply to shipping strategy 
to democracy. There are many reasons to care about the Middle East. But even if you were to argue that the U.S. should not have troops there at all, if U.S. troops are there, you have to protect them. It is immoral and wrong not to protect them. And Joe Biden has been in the business of trying to appease the people who have killed thousands of Americans since the day he took office. He's been in a delusional state about Iran, the same delusional state embraced by Barack Obama, and that led to the rise of Iranian power throughout the Middle East. And Donald Trump recontained it. Donald Trump hampered the Iranians. Donald Trump put in place some of the strictest sanctions in world history. He impoverished the Iranian regime. He boxed them in with the Abraham Accords, and they knew it. And what they also knew is that if they screwed around, the United States under Donald Trump might punch them in the mouth. That actually is a very good foreign policy. It's a very effective foreign policy. And Joe Biden, just as he did with the border, decided to destroy that foreign policy because it had a big gold Trump sign on it. Anything associated with Trump had to be destroyed, no matter how good the policy was. Again, Joe Biden inherited a working border policy. Joe Biden inherited a working Middle East, which is insane. And he promptly decided to blow both of them. We'll get to the border situation in a second. First, old school banking just isn't working anymore. They ding you with ridiculous fees. They play games with your cash. They want you to get into debt. Thankfully, Current offers a better solution. Current has created a product that's built for everyone, a banking system that's more affordable, accessible, and innovative. Current helps you spend, save, and manage your money. It's a secured credit card that lets you use your own money to build credit. You can even boost your savings with a rate of up to 4%. The best part, there are no credit checks or history required. So no matter what your credit history, Current's build card is for you. Plus, there are no annual or subscription fees. With Current, you can build credit safely and save more. The card is sleek. It's easy to use anywhere. Current houses all your banking needs in one app. If you set up direct deposit, you can get paid up to two days faster, and you can qualify for fee-free overdraft up to 200 bucks. The world's changing. It's time banking did too. What exactly are you waiting for? Get Current, the future of banking. Go to Current.com slash Shapiro or download the app. That's Current.com, spelled C-U-R-R-E-N-T dot com, slash Shapiro. Terms apply. Current is a financial technology company, not a bank. Banking services provided by Choice Financial Group member FDIC and Cross River Bank member FDIC for full terms and conditions. Visit Current.com or call 888-851-1172 for more information. So right now, Joe Biden is trying to walk this tightrope to, quote unquote, protect American troops without creating the possibility of a broader conflict with Iran. Now, again, the reality is that that is quite doable. But Joe Biden is so scared. He's so all fire scared of a continuing conflict in the Middle East that he's going to sleepwalk right into one. Because there are two ways the conflict happens. One is we retaliate and then Iran retaliates and then we retaliate and then Iran retaliates and then it escalates. The other way is you do nothing. And then Iran keeps pushing. And what we've been watching for the last several months is Iran keeps pushing. We've seen 160 plus attacks on American targets since October 7th. And Joe Biden has effectively done nothing. They shut down shipping in the Red Sea and Joe Biden hit a bunch of camels in the ass. That is not an actual policy. When Joe Biden puts out a statement saying the three American service members we lost were patriots in the highest sense, their ultimate sacrifice will never be forgotten by our nation. Together, we will keep the sacred obligation we bear to their families. We will strive to be worthy of their honor and valor. We will carry on their commitment to fight terrorism and have no doubt we will hold all those responsible to account at a time and in a manner of our choosing. Does anyone believe that? Does anyone believe that Joe Biden is going to hold those people to account? Because so far, that has not been his policy. His policy has been to pressure our allies. Literally, the moment he stepped onto the world stage as president of the United States, he decided that he was going to destroy relations with the Saudis. Forget about what he's doing with Israel. What he did with the Saudis at the very beginning of his administration is despicable. He decided that as a virtue signal to all of his journalist friends, he was going to cut off the Saudi regime. And then right before the midterms, he had to go on bended knee to the Saudi king and basically ask the de facto Saudi king, Mohammed bin Salman, to lower oil prices, to which MBS was like, why would I do that? You've been campaigning against me since the day you got into office. Joe Biden's entire policy has been oriented against our allies in the Middle East and in favor of trying to bring Iran into the family of nations, which again is the most specious and idiotic goal of any goal in the Middle East, period. I mean, the the number of attacks on Americans is going to continue to rise here because again, Joe Biden has basically done nothing. He has basically done nothing. And it's not just me saying this. It's Donald Trump saying this, which is correct. Here are the statements that Donald Trump put out on Truth Social. Quote, the drone attack on a U.S. military installation in Jordan, killing three American service members and wounding many more, marks a horrible day for America. My most profound sympathies go to the families of the brave service members we have lost. I ask all Americans to join me in praying for those who have been wounded. This brazen attack on the United States is yet another horrific and tragic consequence of Joe Biden's weakness and surrender. This is correct. It says three years ago, Iran was weak, broke, and totally under control. 
Thanks to my maximum pressure policy, the Iranian regime could barely scrape $2 together to fund their terrorist proxies. Then Joe Biden came in and gave Iran billions of dollars, with the re- which the regime has used to spread bloodshed and carnage throughout the Middle East. This attack would never have happened if I was president, not even a chance. Just like the Iranian-backed Hamas attack on Israel would never have happened, the war in Ukraine would never have happened, and we would right now have peace throughout the world. Instead, we are on the brink of World War III. This terrible day is yet more proof that we need an immediate return to peace through strength so that there will be no more chaos, no more destruction, no more loss of precious American lives. Our country cannot survive with Joe Biden as commander in chief. Now, peace through strength for all those isolationists in the Republican Party. Peace through strength is not what many isolationists are talking about. Many isolationists are just like, let's withdraw within our own borders. Let's pretend that foreign threats don't actually exist. Let's pretend that if Russia takes over Ukraine wholesale and takes over a huge supply of wheat to the world, for example, and then threatens NATO's borders, that has no impact on Americans. Let's pretend that if we shut down the Red Sea and shipping can't come through there, then China won't take advantage and go after Taiwan and shut down the Straits of Taiwan and all the rest of it. And I think that is a very short-sighted policy. But most of all, what Donald Trump is calling out is the cowardice and vacillation of the Biden administration, which is totally correct. Which is why Republicans today are really pushing hard for the president of the United States to do, you know, his job. Joe Biden's job is not to assure equity in all public policy. Joe Biden's job is to protect America's interests, particularly abroad, because the president is given outsized impact when it comes to foreign policy. The president has the ability. Under Article 2, the president has the ability to really shape America's foreign policies in ways that he does not American domestic policy. And the fact that he has used that to make the world significantly more chaotic place where conflagration is on the horizon in nearly every direction you look. That's on Joe Biden. Senator Tom Cotton, excellent senator from Arkansas, he put out a statement saying Joe Biden emboldened Iran for years by tolerating attacks on our troops, bribing the Ayatollahs with billions of dollars and appeasing them to no end. He left our troops as sitting ducks and now three are dead and dozens wounded, sadly, as I predicted, would happen for months. On behalf of Arkansans, I deeply extend my condolences to the families of our brave and fallen warriors. May God comfort them as he welcomes their loved ones into his embrace. And may God quickly and completely heal their wounded comrades. Senator Cruz of Texas also blasted Biden. He said that for making, quote, a day one decision, not just to appease the Iranian regime, but indeed to enable the Ayatollah to attack Americans and American interests across the Middle East. This is correct, by the way. Now, what exactly should America do on like a practical level? That's the real question, okay? Because no one is interested in a full-scale war, as I say. Now, Iran should be more scared than we should. And the reason I say that is because that's how deterrence works, folks. Not because I want to go to war with Iran. As I said, for the fifth time in the show, no one wants to go to war with Iran. When it comes to deterrence, the whole idea of deterrence is you, the bad guy, you have to fear me more than I fear you. Otherwise, deterrence is not established. If I fear you more, then you know that you can attack me with impunity. You have to believe that if you have around, there will be a find out on the other end of that equation. Now, what Biden's team is doing is basically this, the same thing that, that Barack Obama used to do. Barack Obama, every time he used to talk about the Iranian nuclear deal, which was a sham and a way of presenting the Iranians with a pathway to a nuclear weapon with a bunch of money. And it was it, one of the worst deals in American history. Every time Barack Obama used to discuss this, he said, what do you want, war? Is that what we're saying? You want war? You want war with Iran? Is that what it is? Because either we, we appease them or there's war. no. That's not right, but that is what Joe Biden is trotting out his own officials to say right now. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, let's say you were a stormtrooper and you were enjoying a nice meal of roasted Ewok in the Death Star mess hall. Well, all of a sudden you hear the voice of Alec Guinness saying, use the force, Luke. The next thing you know, the entire place is going up in flames around you. And it's at this moment you really wished you had life insurance. Make life insurance part of your financial planning this year. Start shopping right now with Policy Genius. Find the right policy and protect your family. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies and find your lowest price. Luckily, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts. Well, they're on hand to help talk you through it. No added fees. Your personal information remains private. It's super satisfying to check life insurance off that to-do list. A good life insurance plan can give you peace of mind that if something happens to you, God forbid, your family will be able to cover mortgage payments, college costs, or other expenses. Life insurance through your workplace might not offer enough protection for your family's needs. It's not going to follow you if you leave your job. Head on over to policygenius.com right now. Save time and money. Give your family a financial safety net with Policy Genius. Head on over to policygenius.com slash Shapiro or click that link in the description. Get your free life insurance quotes. See how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash Shapiro. General C.Q. Brown who was one of the higher ranking members of the American military. He's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Here he was trying to explain the Biden-Iranian policy, which again, makes no sense. When you 
walk this fine line of not wanting it to escalate. What would you say to those people who are who, your critics who would say, look, they're not being tough enough on these militants. They're not being tough enough on Iran. I would also ask, would they, do they want a broader conflict? Do you want us in a full-scale war? Um, and that's the goal is to, uh, to deter them. And we don't want to go down a path of greater escalation that uh, drives to a much broader conflict um, within the region. Oh, because they might escalate. Oh, you, they might escalate, guys. Did you know that Iran might escalate? Okay, now, I, I might note to you at this point that Iran has already had its proxy Hamas kill 1,200 Israelis and take 240 of them captive, and now they refuse to surrender. I might note also that Hezbollah has been firing rockets into Israel on the northern border consistently for four months at this point. I might note that, again, the Houthi pirates have been literally capturing shipping in the Red Sea and have shut down shipping through that strait. I might note that Iranian proxies have now killed three Americans. So exactly what would it look like if they escalate? What would escalation look like to you? Seriously, what, what would escalation look like? Are we talking about like full-scale Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps brigades going up against American military targets? What are we talking about here? And the answer is they don't know because this is all about Joe Biden's reelect effort. That's all it's about. Joe Biden has basically said to the Iranians, guys, as long as you don't go to full-scale war, as long as you don't go to full-scale war, you can do whatever you want. Whatever you want. Just keep it relatively, you can kill Americans. Keep it relatively low level and I'll keep it relatively low level. And everything will be fine until I get my reelect. And Iran is thinking, okay, this is a great time to push. Because Joe Biden ain't gonna do he ain't gonna do anything. Joe Biden ain't gonna do anything. He's gonna let us shut down the shipping in the Red Sea. He's gonna let us attack American allies like Saudi Arabia and Israel and now Jordan with impunity. And he's gonna do all of that because he's afraid that if this thing goes hot in any way, shape, or form, it'll hurt his reelect efforts. So now's go time for the Iranians. They're looking at Joe Biden and they see a mark, man, and they should see a mark because he's acting like a mark. Now. What could the United States do in a situation like this? Now, again, you don't have to attack Tehran. You don't have to attack Iran directly. There are a bunch of things you can do. One of the things you could do, you could ship every piece of Iranian military weaponry in the Red Sea. You could, ship, you could destroy all of it. Now, when I say that, that sounds crazy, except for the fact that the United States actually did that in 1988. In 1988, there was an operation it's called Operation Praying Mantis. It happened after a, a U.S. warship was mined. And so... The Americans retaliated. This, of course, was under Ronald Reagan. The Americans retaliated by taking down one frigate, one gunboat, three speedboats, another frigate crippled, two platforms destroyed, one fighter damaged. The United States basically found every military asset that Iran had in the, in the Persian Gulf, in, in Iranian territorial waters, and just sank all of them. So, okay, well, you can't bother American shipping anymore, it turns out. It turns out that you can't bother American ships because um, all of you are underwater now. It actually led to Iran basically ending the Iran-Iraq war. It had a major impact on the end of the Iran-Iraq war because Iran was like, oh, I see. We probably shouldn't F around and find out. So the U.S. could easily do that. To pretend that Iranians' military capabilities in the, in the waterways around the Persian Gulf are somehow a deep threat to America is absurd. They are not. America's military force could take all of them out tomorrow. We did it before. There are a bunch of other things that we could do. The United States military facilitated the ouster of ISIS in under a month. Are you telling me the, Un the United States couldn't use our aerial bombardment power, for example, without even putting troops on the ground and just wholesale destroy Iranian terror proxy positions in, say, Iraq or Syria? Certainly the United States could do that. What would be the purpose of that? To get them to stop. Because if they find out that next time they do that, there's an F-35 on their doorstep, somehow things look a little bit different. None of this requires going directly to war with Iran. And guess what? Iran is not going to war directly with the United States. There is a reason they are using proxies. If, the, if Iran wanted to go to war with the United States, they would not be using proxies. They would be using the IRGC. They would be directly attacking American forces. They are not. They're using all of their terror proxies because they understand that if they actually triggered a war with the United States, the mullahs would not have heads attached to their bodies tomorrow morning. They would be in little bitty pieces all around Tehran if they actually declared war on the United States. So they're not doing that. Instead, they're using proxies. Well, that's okay. We don't have to dethrone the mullahs in Iran. That's up to the Iranian people to do that. But the United States certainly doesn't have to stand for American soldiers being killed. And to pretend that, re that, that deterrence cannot be reestablished is to ignore the entirety of the Trump administration. When that is exactly what the Trump administration established. 
I mean, right now, things are getting much worse in the Middle East because of American cowardice, because Joe Biden is a coward when it comes to the Middle East. And he believes that his left wing will abandon him if he actually defends the interests of the United States. As I say, we'll get to the border in a second, because the same sort of thing. But things are getting worse in Yemen, for example. Why? Well, one of the reasons is because one of the first things Joe Biden did when he took office is he said to the Saudis, you need to stop your operations against the Houthis in Yemen. There's too much civilian casualties. There's too much carnage. There's too, it's too much of a problem. So you have to leave the Houthis in control of about half of Yemen's territory. Well, it turns out things are getting worse there. Quote, this is from the Washington Post. Nearly a decade of civil war in the Arabian Peninsula country has driven millions of people from their homes, deep in poverty and spread starvation. Now a new conflict. Houthi fighters are firing missiles on American shipping and American and British forces are striking back is disrupting tentative efforts at peace. Well, it turns out that you cannot make peace with people who are attacking shipping in the Red Sea. What do they think is going to happen? And if they think what's going to happen is good, what does that say about Western strength? By the, speaking of which, Iran-linked groups are having more attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq, according to the Agence France Press. Iran-allied armed groups vowed on Friday to keep up attacks on U.S.-led coalition forces in Iraq. Washington has forces in Iraq as part of the international coalition against ISIS. The volatile situation has pushed Iraq's prime minister to call for the coalition to leave. Why? Because the coalition in Iraq is reliant on Iran. And the greatest sin of the Iraq war was not the actual Iraq war itself. The greatest sin of the Iraq war is that it turned it into an Iranian proxy state. The destruction of the Iraqi military and the handing of, of the state over to basically Shia militia groups sponsored by Iran was a terrible, terrible decision. If we're going to review the history here. But the bottom line is that Iran-linked groups are saying they're going to escalate their attacks. They're not lowering their attacks. They're escalating. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, are you struggling with back taxes or unfiled returns this year? The IRS is escalating collections. They've added 20,000 new agents. Oh, joy. In these challenging times, your best defense is to use Tax Network USA. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. These guys, not your friends. Don't waive your rights and speak with these agents on your own without backup. You need Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm. They've saved over a billion dollars in back taxes for their clients. They can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10 grand or 10 million bucks, they can help. Whether it's business or personal taxes, whether you have the means to pay or whether you're on a fixed income, Tax Network can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Seize control of your financial future right now. Don't let tax issues overpower you. Contact Tax Network USA for immediate relief and expert guidance. Call 1-800-245-6000 or visit TNUSA.com slash Shapiro. Again, that's TNUSA.com slash Shapiro. By the way, Iran is escalating everywhere. They're escalating with regard to Pakistan. Yesterday, according to Reuters, unidentified gunmen killed nine Pakistani workers in a rest of southeastern border area of Iran on Saturday. They just went and murdered a bunch of Pakistanis. Iran is upping the ante everywhere because they sense weakness. And they sense weakness because the United States is acting weak. They put out a trial balloon over the weekend, for example, that they might consider slowing weapons to Israel to put pressure on Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to scale back the war in Gaza. It's going to U.S. officials talking to NBC News. The White House later rejected the report. The suggestion is that leverage had to be placed on Israel to stop them from what? To stop them from what? Destroying Hamas? Going north and destroying Hezbollah? So it's not only that the United States refuses to directly engage with these groups, which, again, the United States should only engage with groups that have attacked the United States or United States troops. But it's not just that. They're telling American allies they can't engage from Saudi Arabia with the Houthis to Israel with Hamas. You want to talk about why Iran sees weakness? This is why. This is why. And it's because the left flank of Joe Biden's party does not like the West. They do not like the West. They believe that Western powers are evil. They truly do. They believe that the United States' influence in the Middle East is pernicious. They believe that Israel is a pernicious force in the Middle East. They believe that any alliance with America in the Middle East turns the allying country bad. That's what they actually think. So here, for example, is MSNBC over the weekend comparing support for Israel to supporting Russia in its war against Ukraine, which is totally insane. Israel abandoned the Gaza Strip in 2005. Hamas then took it over and used it as a staging ground for literally thousands of rocket attacks over the intervening 18 years, and then proceeded to murder 1,200 Israelis by rushing over the border and murdering children in the cribs where they slept. And the morons at MSNBC are comparing Israel trying to protect its own population to Russia invading a sovereign country. Just totally nuts. So for people who have been alarmed by this and have felt you talk to us about human rights, about the international rules-based order when it came to Ukraine, 
what about brown people in Palestine? This is a huge moment. I'd say the judgment is also really important in that it says Palestinians in Gaza are a protected group, which is really important because there's a lot of denialism over the idea that Palestinians are a group at all. Okay, again, the, the MSNBC is suggesting that this is like Russia or it's just it's all insane. But that wing of the party is who Joe Biden is trying to appease. He's not just trying to appease the Iranians. He's trying to appease that wing of the party who have common interest in many cases with the Iranians. Okay, meanwhile, I mean, none of this should be surprising because Joe Biden staffed up with people who are sympathetic to the wrong sides in the Middle East. For example, one of the first people that Joe Biden actually appointed to his administration was a former Palestinian UNRWA official. He appointed him director of NSC intelligence. This guy's name is Maher Abitar, and he was on President Barack Obama's National Security Council as director for Israeli and Palestinian affairs, which is totally insane in the first place. And in the intervening time, he worked with the UN Relief and Works Agency. Well, what exactly does that tell you? It should tell you something because it turns out that um, the UNRWA is a Hamas front group. This guy now works at a high level inside the Biden administration. How do we know that the UNRWA is a Hamas front group? According to a brand new Wall Street Journal report, around 10% of the UNRWA's 12,000 staff in Gaza have links to Hamas. Fully 10% of the staff of the UNRWA have direct ties to Hamas. By the way, the organization has way more ties than that. Those are just people with direct links to Hamas. If you're talking about tangential links to Hamas or providing areas where Hamas could theoretically put weaponry, for example. You're talking about nearly all of the UNRWA. According to the Wall Street Journal, at least 12 employees of the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency had connections to the October 7th attack directly. Around 10% of all of its Gaza staff have ties to Islamist militant groups, according to intelligence reports reviewed by the Wall Street Journal. Of the 12 UNRWA employees with links to the attacks, seven were primary or secondary school teachers, as we've talked about before, the UNRWA which is a relief and works agency directed for one population, one population only. It is the only UN agency that is directed only at one population, the Palestinians. It has been completely hijacked and taken over by Hamas. Hamas runs the place. Hamas runs the education of the UNRWA, which is why it shouldn't be shocking that primary, that you're talking about like third grade teachers, guys, who have actual ties to Hamas and direct links to the October 7th attacks, including two math teachers, two Arabic teachers, and one primary school teacher. A bunch of other countries including the United States, have now suspended aid to UNRWA. They shouldn't just suspend it. They should kill it. UNRWA is one of the most despicable organizations in the world. It's like the most despicable part of the most despicable UN, most Eisley garbage organization on the planet. The UNRWA is uh, now being defunded by a bunch of countries, which is amazing because five seconds ago, it was um, the Biden administration and the entire European world that was calling for Israel to ship aid to, wait, wait, wait for it, the UNRWA. And it was Israel saying, if you ship aid to the UNRWA, Hamas is going to hijack it because the UNRWA is in fact an arm of Hamas. And now Israel provided the proof. And the rest of the world's like, oh, maybe we shouldn't give them money. Yeah, you think? Yeah, you think? Bad foreign policy leads to horrific consequences, including dead Americans. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, what keeps this office going, aside from a just burning need for justice and cultural relevance? Black Rifle Coffee. Daily Wire is fueled by Black Rifle Coffee. Not only do they have ready-to-drink cans for people with no time to brew coffee the traditional way, their coffee subscription gives you the chance to purchase limited edition flavors. Black Rifle Coffee subscription gives you nothing but the best. It's a Coffee of the Month club where you get premium roasts from the best farms worldwide. Every month, you'll get a new exotic roast shipped to your door, each with a unique origin and a killer bag design with a matching sticker. Black Rifle Coffee is a veteran-founded coffee company. It's operated by principled men and women who honor those who protect, defend, and support our country. With every purchase you make, they give back. So stop running out of coffee. Sign up for a coffee club subscription. Have Black Rifle Coffee delivered straight to your door on a schedule. Save money. Drink America's coffee. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro at checkout for 10% off your one-time purchase or first coffee club order. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com. Promo code Shapiro. Get 10% off. You can also find Black Rifle Coffee in grocery and convenience stores near you. Black Rifle Coffee is America's coffee. Meanwhile, speaking of Trump-era policies that were done away with, just because Joe Biden hated Donald Trump and because the Democratic Party decided that everything Trump touched had to be destroyed, whether it was good or whether it was bad, the border continues to be an absolute bleep show. And the chief policies at the border are entirely executive branch driven. No additional legislation is needed to secure the American border. It is, in fact, a duty of the federal government 
to arrest people who cross America's southern border and to send them home if they do not fulfill the requirements for asylum. Joe Biden has changed the interpretation of the rules. He changed two specific things. One, he suggested that he would get rid of day one, remain in Mexico. Remain in Mexico was the policy whereby Donald Trump had an agreement with the country of Mexico that if you came to the border and said that you wanted asylum, we would say, okay, you can have a court date. Here is a stamp. Come back in two months when it's your court date. And in the meantime, we need you to wait in Juarez. You need to, you can't wait here. You got to wait down there. And it turns out that a bunch of people didn't show up at the border anymore. Why? Because they knew that the entire game was to get into the United States and disappear into the interior. And that if you actually had to wait in Juarez, you weren't getting into the United States. You would show up for your asylum hearing. You'd have no proof that you needed asylum. And then you'd get kicked out anyway. So why make the long walk all the way up to the American border via drug smuggler and then be let off at the border to be rejected, sent back to Mexico, come back for your court date, get rejected back home? Why do that? Just stay home. That was a good policy. Joe Biden did away with it. Day one. The other policy that Joe Biden changed that was huge is that Joe Biden decided that the way to adjudicate asylum was that if you claimed asylum, we would simply catch and release you. We would not hold you in detention. We would not even threaten to hold you in detention. You would show up. We would detain you for 48, 72 hours, and then we would release you to the interior. As I've said, you should check out the documentary that we just put out, this brand new, great piece of content over at Daily Wire Plus. First episode of Divided States of Biden. We went down to America's southern border in Arizona. We saw all of this in action. The border is wide open because Joe Biden decided that he was going to staff nearly all of Border Patrol on busing and administrative duty. Their job is to go to various areas of the border, pick up illegal immigrants, bring them to the detention center, maybe a mile, a couple miles away, process them, release them. Meanwhile, the border is left wide open for drug smugglers and criminals to get through, which is why you're seeing the kind of numbers that you're seeing right now. And this is also why the state of Texas is doubling down. According to CBS News, the unprecedented standoff between the state of Texas and the federal government at the southern border continues. On Monday, the Supreme Court said that the federal government had the authority to remove razor wire Texas had installed at the southern border. And then Homeland Security said Texas had until Friday to give federal authorities access to Eagle Pass. Governor Abbott, for his part, said that he would increase state patrol of the border. And he added more barriers and more razor wire. Here, in fact, is some tape of more razor wire going up at the border. It is now an actual wall that is being ad hoc in, in Eagle Park over at the border. This is happening at Eagle Pass. So here they are putting up some razor wire. They've got some shipping containers. Okay, this is all because Joe Biden has decided to leave the border wide open. It's that simple. But Joe Biden is trying to shift this off. Joe Biden is trying to shift this off. What's he trying to do? He's trying to suggest he needs more legislation. He needs more power. If you give him more power, then he'll enforce the border. Now, again, the laws are on the books. This is not a question as to whether you need more laws. You don't even need more resources. When we spoke with Brandon Judd, who's the head of the Border Patrol Union, when we spoke with him, he said, this is not a question of resources. This is a question of misallocation of resources. We have enough Border Patrol agents already. They're being told actively not to do their job. I talked to some Border Patrol agents down at the border on background, and they were telling me morale has never been lower, that they have been forced basically into this administrative duty job by the Biden administration. They're not even allowed to do their job anymore. That is because of Joe Biden. Joe Biden could finish that tomorrow. Literally tomorrow, he could do it. He could do it today, for that matter, if he doesn't call a lid by 1 p.m. But now, Joe Biden is suggesting that we actually need more legislation. We need it right now. It needs to be soft legislation. It needs to be the kind of legislation that increases the number of administrative law judges so that we can process more people and let them into the interior faster. That's the real key. The real key is to let people in faster, not to limit the flow, but to increase the flow. According to the Associated Press, President Biden on Friday pressed Congress to embrace a bipartisan Senate deal to pair border enforcement measures with Ukraine aid. House Speaker Mike Johnson suggested the compromise on border and immigration policy could be DOA in his chamber. So Biden is trying to shift this off by pretending, effectively speaking, that what he is doing right now is giving, he's trying to come to a compromise. He's trying to make a deal. Now, again, he doesn't need to make a deal to close the border. He does not. And right now, that compromise, what we've seen, we've seen no actual material from what the compromise looks like. The leaks suggest that the Democrats only want to have sort of an automatic border closing at 5,000 border encounters a day. 5,000 border encounters a day. Now, last I checked, 5,000 is a lot of border encounters. In fact, if you had 5,000 border encounters a day on average, you'd be talking about almost 2 million people, 1.8 million people entering the country every year. That's a lot of people. It's a reduction from where we are now, but not by much. We had 2.4 million minimum last year. Republicans being the, you know, 
hard hearted people they are. They were apparently thinking about a 3000 border limit, which would still be almost 1.1 million people a year, which is still too much. How about zero? How about zero? How about you come and you show actual evidence you require asylum and then we'll consider whether to let you in? How about you show up with like an actual set of job skills that enriches the United States and makes America stronger? And then maybe we let you in. How about you don't get to come here and then just throw up your hands, claim asylum, be released into the interior? How about that? But again, there is always a couple of Republicans who are willing to provide cover for this sort of stuff. So Senator James Lankford, who I, I typically like, Senator Lankford does a good job in Oklahoma, but he's now accusing Republicans of tanking the deal. Now, if he really wants Republicans to side with him on this, we need to see the deal. I can't endorse a deal until I have seen it. And from what I've heard leaked, this is not a good deal, not by any stretch of the imagination. Here's Senator Lankford. Yeah, well, it's definitely not going to let a bunch of people in. It's focused on actually turning people around on it. It is interesting. Republicans four months ago would not give funding for Ukraine, for Israel, and for our southern border because we demanded changes in policy. So we actually locked arms together and said, we're not going to give you money for this. We want a change in law. And now it's interesting, a few months later, when we're finally getting to the end, they're like, oh, just kidding. I actually don't want a change in law because it's a presidential election year. We all have an oath to the Constitution, and we have a commitment to say we're going to do whatever we can to be able to secure the border. Okay, I mean, let's see the deal. And if that's the case, then I'll stump for it. But if that's not the case, then Joe Biden should just close the border now. And again, this is the way Democrats are going to try and play it also. So Langford is helping out Democrats here. Democrats are claiming that Joe Biden requires additional legal authority to do what he is doing. And that's the reason why they're not compromising with regard to legislation. That's the reason why they're not just caving to Republicans. They need some sort of compromise. That's it. That's their, and Republicans are standing in the way of the compromise. Republicans, meanwhile, are like a dude, just surrender, just surrender. You could do it tomorrow yourself with executive authority. You don't need additional law to do this. Or you could, you know, actually just pass H.R. 2. He's not doing either of those things. In just one second, we'll get to Democrats trying to make this case first. America is currently experiencing an unprecedented invasion, as we've said, with millions of illegal immigrants flooding over our border. The drug cartels are doing the invading. They're doing it under the Biden administration's watch. As Texans are shouldering the fight against the surge, Arizona's governor remains eerily silent because Joe Biden continues to pursue this nonsense. I traveled to America's southern border to uncover the shocking truth and the real depths of this crisis. It is shocking. It is criminal. It's our duty at The Daily Wire to share that truth. Take a look at invasion on the southern border. America is currently experiencing an invasion. A lot of people coming in from Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria. Is there a fair bit of gang affiliation among All the, Always. These people are just crossing the border illegally, waving their hands in the air at our cameras, saying, hey, here I am, come get me. We're no longer the border patrol, we're the welcome patrol. The number one site in America for fentanyl trafficking across the border. And if Joe Biden remains in office, it's only going to get worse. I'm Ben Shapiro, and this is the Divided States of Biden, invasion on the southern border. Watch now on Daily Wire Plus. As I say, our southern border is wide open. Joe Biden has crafted this policy. He has created it. Join me on the ground as I bring you the real world consequences of one of the most destructive presidencies in American history. Watch Invasion on the Southern Border streaming right now over at Daily Wire Plus. Okay, meanwhile, so as we say, Democrats are trying to shift the border conversation into why aren't Republicans just compromise? Why won't Republicans come to an agreement? This is Gavin Newsom's shtick. He's running a shadow presidential campaign. He's basically sticking around just in case Joe Biden should fall off a bridge or something. Or, you know, collapse, which he could do, theoretically. Here's the governor of California, who's been a horrible governor. Here's the governor talking about how this is really Republicans' fault at the border. And you've had six million uh, apprehensions at the border. What ultimately should happen to all those people? And are there people that don't qualify for asylum or totally came in illegally? I mean, should there be deportations? This is what Republicans are calling for, these mass roundups and deportations. But, but what, what happens? Well, I think you have to deal with the cards that are dealt. you got to deal with the reality on the ground, and you have to have a comprehensive conversation around this across the spectrum, the push and the pull. And that's around the fundamental issue, immigration reform. It's not just border security. The president put out a comprehensive strategy, a pathway to citizenship along the lines of their former hero, Ronald Reagan to address the reality on the ground. We have a plan, $14 billion plan right now, to get more judges, to process people more efficiently, more quickly, provide security down at the border, 2,300 new border agents. That's what the President of the United States has put up in front of Congress, and they refuse to act. They're just promoting an agenda to disrupt and find a crowbar to put in the spokes of the wheels of the Biden administration to disrupt any progress on this because they don't want progress. 
No, actually, what Democrats want is to open that spigot further to let in more illegal immigrants. They just want to do so with faster administering of the law as opposed to, you know, keeping people in Mexico to wait for their asylum hearings, for example. So Democrats, in order to actually pass this particular logical bar, they have to establish that Joe Biden can't just unilaterally close the border today, which he can. So they trotted out Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut to make this particular case, suggesting that Joe Biden does not actually have the legal authority to close the border. Um, Spoiler alert, he absolutely does. Senator, uh, Republicans, including the House Speaker, argue, a lot of them, not the ones you're dealing with, but a lot of them argue that President Biden already has the authority that he needs to secure the border. And they're criticizing this deal that you've been negotiating. Um, What do you make of that, of the notion that President Biden already has tools and he doesn't need more yet? Well, it's just not true. It's a political talking point. Um, Those same Republicans in the House of Representatives who say President Biden has the tools introduced H.R. 2, which is a massive border reform bill. They said it was one of their most important priorities. Um, And so Republicans have said openly that they want to pass border and immigration reform. All of a sudden, they are against border and immigration reform because they are worried it's actually going to pass. Okay, wrong. What they originally said was Joe Biden has the authority to do the thing. Then they said, you know what we would like? We'd like to force him to do the thing. So we could force him to do the thing by passing additional laws that force him to do the thing. And then Joe Biden said, well, I'm not going to do the thing in legislation. So they said, fine, we won't do the thing in legislation. Just do the thing yourself. Do it right now. We can either force you in law, but if you won't do that, if Senate Democrats are holding it up, well, then fine. We just won't do a deal. There won't be a deal. You have no leverage. Republicans are saying to Biden, you have no leverage. And you know what? They're right. They don't have leverage. So again, the entire Democratic case here is they're going to try and blame the impasse on Donald Trump. So here is Chris Murphy suggesting that this is all Donald Trump's scheme, that he doesn't want legislation passed because he wants chaos at the border. We do have a bipartisan deal. We're finishing the text right now. And the question is whether Republicans are going to listen to Donald Trump, who wants to preserve chaos at the border because he thinks that it's a winning political issue for him, or whether we are going to pass legislation, which would be the biggest bipartisan reform of our border and immigration laws in 40 years and would give the president of the United States, whether that president is a Republican or a Democrat, new important power to be able to better manage the flow of people across the border. Okay, so they're trying to blame Trump. They're trying to blame Trump for the lack of legislation. Now, Trump's response to this should be, Joe Biden doesn't need legislation. Now, as president, I just did it. Why isn't he just doing the thing? But Donald Trump is Donald Trump, so here is Donald Trump's response to all of this. President Biden is backing a Senate deal to clamp down at the border, while Trump wants Republicans to oppose that deal and deny Biden any political win. A lot of the senators are trying to say respectfully they're blaming it on me. I said, that's okay. Please blame it on me. Please. Because they were getting ready to pass a very bad bill. Okay, please blame it on me is not exactly what you're looking for here politically. Why, why please blame it on me? Why? This is the same sort of language he used when he was president about a government shutdown. Blame it on me. Well, no, no. Blame it on Biden. That's the whole point. That's what a campaign is. Blame it on Joe. It's Joe Biden's fault. He's the president. What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, if you are a fan of Trump and you would like for Trump to be the president of the United States again, or if you just don't want Joe Biden to be president of the United States again, you need to blame Joe Biden. Like, what? why? Why would you say blame it on me? Democrats are going to literally use that in every ad with regard to the border from now until the election. Why would you say that? It doesn't make any logical sense, especially because it's not true. What's going on right now is not the fault of Senate Republicans. It is not the fault of Donald Trump. It is the fault of Democrats who want the border open and are presenting bad compromises in the Senate and then pretending that Joe Biden doesn't already have the legal authority to make sure that our border is safe and secure, which, of course, he absolutely does. He already has all of the necessities in order to make sure the border is secure. That's all. Well, meanwhile, President Trump, again, the entire case the Democrats are going to make against President Trump is that he is unelectable, that he's crazy and all of the rest. They're also going to try and bankrupt him. I mean, that, that, that is one of the big things that is happening right now is that legally they're just going after him in every way, shape, form that they can. Letitia James over in New York is trying to go after him for hundreds of millions of dollars based on just an absolutely specious and ridiculous judgment based on him inflating real estate values with no actual damages, by the way, to the lender. So they're going after him for like hundreds of millions of dollars. Meanwhile, another jury has now given Donald Trump an $83.3 million defamation penalty to E. Jean Carroll on top of a $5 million penalty he was already ordered to pay her. 
So just to get this straight, she claims at an unspecified time in a department store in the middle of the day, in an unspecified season, Donald Trump raped her. She has no proof to back this up, like none. She has no substantiating proof that any of this is true. But because this is in New York and everybody hates Donald Trump and all the rest, they decide that it's true. And so Donald Trump saying that it's not true and that she's a liar and all the rest of this, that that now amounts to defamation. And so they have given him a judgment of $88 million, $88 million. Meanwhile, in that other case I was talking about with Letitia James, Judge Arthur Engron is going to issue his decision on financial penalties. James wants Trump and his companies to be ordered to pay $370 million. You're talking about in total $450 million removed from President Trump if this judgment were to go through. So Trump is appealing all of this, obviously. But um, the effort to bankrupt Donald, not just to criminally prosecute him, but to bankrupt him as well, is truly an astonishing, astonishing thing. And the goal here is obviously to make him so toxic that it's not possible to vote for him. This is the case that uh, the estimable AOC is making, that Trump can't win a general election because his primary numbers are so low and all the rest of it. But I do want to ask you about the president's reelection campaign. As you know, in some of these key battleground states, he has some real vulnerabilities Why do you think he is struggling against former President Donald Trump, someone who's been indicted four times and who's now been slapped with this $83 million civil suit? Well, you know, I think we can take a look at the overall landscape here. Um, It's not just what we're talking about with President Biden, but... Uh, But former President Trump also has extraordinary vulnerabilities. We saw that in New Hampshire. The fact that he is a former sitting president, head of his party, virtually everyone else has dropped out and endorsed him. And still, as we just saw, Nikki Haley uh, came, you know, she she cleared about 43 percent in New Hampshire, bodes uh, very not well uh, for Donald Trump and his ability to win a general election. Now, again, with all Donald Trump's foibles, with all of his failures, with all of the rest of this sort of stuff, Donald Trump is still the leader right now. If you look at the polling data right now, he is up in the real clear politics polling average by more than four points, which really means five or six, because the polls tend to underrepresent Donald Trump's base of support. The latest Reuters Ipsos poll that came out the 24th had Donald Trump up five on Joe Biden. In fact, there has not been a national poll in which Joe Biden leads it since the beginning of the year. And when you look at the state polling data, things start to get a little more interesting. If you look at, for example, Wisconsin, it hasn't been polled all that much. Latest poll was in like beginning of December. Donald Trump was up four right now. Real clear politics has that stacked up as a tie. The latest polling in Michigan is more recent and Donald Trump is up very heavily in Michigan. In fact, he's led in the last four polls in Michigan. Meanwhile, last three polls in Pennsylvania, he's down. So if the election were held today, Donald Trump would likely win the election by winning Wisconsin as well as Michigan. But it's still a very close run thing. Why is it such a close run thing? Because again, Go back to the beginning of the show. When it comes to policy, Joe Biden is a bleep show. He's an absolute bleep show. Plus, then combine that with the fact that he doesn't seem to be in control of his own faculties. It's a real problem for him. Here is Joe Biden over the weekend referring to Donald Trump as the sitting president of the United States. Did you see what he recently said about that he wants to see the economy crash this year? A sitting president. As we say in my face, bless me, Father, for, I mean, come on, man. Um, that's, um, that he's the sitting, come on, Matt. Yep. He is. He is no longer with us. Okay. Now the time has come to discuss what I think is truly the most important story on planet earth. Sup, sup, sup. That's right. All you folks have been sticking around for my hip hop talk because after all, I am America's number one hip hop artist. Dr. Dreidel, Ben and M, Jupac. Ben with the Benjis. That's right. For shizzle. We're here to talk about the number one song in America, according to iTunes. And that is fact. My boy, Tom McDonald. I'll admit my boy, Tom, did most of the heavy lifting on this song. But I was present. And indeed, I did rap. And um, I've contended before that if you can speak to a beat, you can rap. And this is a meritocracy right here. And so I present to you, without any further ado, the number one song in America. Facts. 
They call me offensive, controversial There's only two genders, boys and girls They can't cancel my message Cause I'm the biggest independent rapper in the whole freaking world Claim that I'm racist, yeah alright I'm not ashamed because I'm white If every Caucasian's a bigot, I guess every Muslim's a terrorist Every liberal is right I don't wanna talk to folks who don't get it Go woke, go broke, no hope is pathetic Pro-choice pronouns, pro love, you're progressive But you ain't pro-gun, no one to protect it Where the American flags at? Remember when people would hang those They've been taken down, they all been replaced With BLM flags or a rainbow This ain't rap, this ain't money, cars and clothes we ain't selling drugs, we ain't gonna overdose We ain't pushing guns, ain't promoting stripper poles We won't turn your sons into thugs or your daughters into hoes I don't care if I offend you I was put here to upset you You can cry and you can scream You can riot in the streets You defunded the police Now there's no one to protect you Let's look at the stats, I've got the facts My money like Liz, so my pockets are fat Homie, I'm epic, don't be a whap Dog, it's a yarmulke, homie, no cap Look at the graphs, look at my charts You're blowing money on strippers and cars You go into prison, I'm on television Dog, no one knows who you are Keep hating on me on the internet My comment section, all woke Karens And I make racks off compound interest Y'all live with your parents Nikki, take some notes, I just did this for fun All my people, download this Let's get a billboard number one This ain't rap, this ain't money, cars and clothes we ain't selling drugs, we ain't gonna overdose We ain't pushing guns, ain't promoting stripper poles We won't turn your sons into thugs or your daughters into hoes I don't care if I offend you I was put here to upset you You can cry and you can scream, you can riot in the streets You defunded the police, now there's no one to protect you Guess it's cool to be the victim, well, I'ma be the man You sad, you sad, you sad You just try to get attention, being triggered's all you have You mad, you mad, you mad You blame everybody else for every problem that you can You sad, you sad, you sad I will never say I'm sorry, I ain't taking nothing back I don't care if I offend you I was put here to upset you That's right, right here. Now, I'll admit, I'm living the life. I'm out there hitting the clubs, as the kids say. I'm out there enjoying my life. Got my sweet ride. That's right, it's a Honda Odyssey, all loaded up with childers in the back. Got all sorts of bleep going on. So while I'm out here living the sweet life, you know, as America's favorite hip-hop star, let me just remind you, America, it's where anyone can do anything, baby. And that's a fact. All right, guys, the rest of the show continues right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll be joined on the line by my fellow rap god and hip-hop legend, Tom McDonald. If you're not a member, become a member. Use code Shapiro. Check out for two months free on all annual plans. Click that link in the description and join us.